Welcome back to the Nuggets of Gold podcast and YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Trey Lance and going over his debut. Uh, to start it off, I think he looked pretty good. I think the biggest takeaway of the whole thing is we've talked about these t- tools that he has, you know, his ability to make every single throw on the field. And we've, I mean, we've heard about it in training camp, but this was the first time we've seen him go on an NFL field and display that. I mean, you saw the 80 yard bomb to Trent Sherfield. Obviously, that's the big throw. Um, the other, I think, I think his best throw of the day, though, besides that one, was it was third and ten or third and eleven. It, they were coming down the opposite way as when they went down the field to Sherfield, and Jimmy throws a dot on a, about a ten to twelve yard out to Richie James. Perfect throw, hits him in the hands. Richie James fumbles over it, and they have to end up punting. That was an absolute dot, and that play right there is what this offense has been missing when Jimmy Garoppolo or Nick Mullins or, or really whoever in the Kyle Shanahan era has been under center. Um, but we saw a full display of that. This dude is able to make every single throw on the field. Now, it wasn't like his first performance was, you know, immaculate or like amazing or anything. Overall, you look at the numbers, he went 5 of 14. Now, that's kind of skewed. On one end, there were two screen passes that he threw that were completed, but they were they were basically ruled runs because they were behind the line of scrimmage. So you don't count those in. Um and then also the three drops, um, two to guys that I think probably won't make the roster. And then Brandon Ayuk had a, an unusual drop for him. Um, but overall, I mean, Trey Lance really flashed the tools. Now, I think the biggest thing I was a little bit concerned about was his his pocket presence wasn't amazing. And he even came out and said, like, I think that some of those sacks from me because he took four sacks. But anyone that was watching was seeing the second unit of the offensive line get absolutely cooked. Uh, we saw Aaron Banks miss a couple plays. We saw uh, Brunsko miss one. Uh, Jalen Moore, who's kind of competing for that swing tackle, he missed one. And I thought the rookies actually, the rookie offensive lineman actually did good. But that second unit as a whole did not do very good. There was a couple times where there was miscommunication across the edge. Um, on one of them, you see that Trey Lance wants to get the ball out. And a guy beats, I think it was the center, gets beat. And there's a free edge rusher coming off the left. And this was about a third and four. And he sees the guy open. He goes to throw it. And he, and he has to hold it because if he throws it, it's, there's a very good chance he gets tipped or intercepted, you know, whatever the case is. Um, but we saw him, I don't think he was really rattled, but he was running for his life. Um, but when the offense was clicking, when it was, you know, the Kyle Shanahan offense that we've, we've seen over the last few years, he looked so comfortable in it when he runs the bootleg, when he sits back and then he adjusts and he moves that around in the pocket. Aiden, we were talking about it before his ability to extend the play and keep looking downfield, like on the Brandon Ayuk play. Um, like, it was amazing. It, that that was the biggest thing, and that's the thing that the 49ers have not had a quarterback under Kyle Shanahan, and that's that's something that Kyle's never really had. I mean, you could kind of go back to RG three to talk about that, but throughout Kyle Shanahan's you know head coaching career, that this has definitely not been a guy that he's had. So overall, I was really really happy with the outing. Now, was it perfect? No, that's going to happen when it's a rookie quarterback who's younger than me going out there competing. You know, against that against mostly a, a not completely, but Early on, it was the second unit for the most part for the Niners against a lot of the first unit for the Chiefs. And I mean, y- you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, you saw like the the difference in a uh, in skill set on the lines early on. But overall, I liked it. Aiden, what were your thoughts on on Trey Lance's debut? Yeah, I think it comes back to two two main things. Um, everybody saw the 80 yard touchdown. I think everybody can probably agree Jimmy is not making that throw. Kyle's probably not calling that play. Um, that says more to me than anything else. Jimmy was three for three, but his passes traveled a, a total of four air yards. Um, and I think you, and, and I think that we talked about it before, Lance's was something like 10 or, or 11 um, average, which is a stark difference from what, 1.3. Um, so super duper different. But the biggest takeaway for me is Kyle did not a single design run for, for Trey Lance. Um, that's something that, I think everybody expects to see more of going forward. Maybe not in the preseason really at all um, because you don't want to really show your hand and think about um, let let defenses plan, especially before week one. Uh, but that's something that will slow down the pass rush and is a, a huge reason why Lance w- was even drafted because he's such a good runner of, of the football. Um, and people worried about the Niners offensive line. Keep in mind, we didn't start the, the, the two veterans and the guy who's maybe the best tackle in, in the entire league. Um, that'll make the offensive line better, but I will totally agree. Lance was running for his life a little bit. 
but I was super impressed to see, especially on that first drive, we'd seen some, we'd, we'd heard some, some training camp stuff on, on how he, he took sacks. Um, but he, he fired a, a laser to IU, which was dropped. Um, but I was impressed with the fact that he kept his eyes downfield and made a good throw should have been a first down. Um, and he didn't look to, to just run it, even though he probably could have, um, and would have been exciting to see it happen. But, uh, those were the three things that, that stood out to me the most. Yeah. And one thing I noticed is that he, he was, he hesitated a little bit. Like there were some throws that were there and he didn't quite like, you know, th- like let it rip. Um, I think as he gets more comfortable, as you know, he has an offensive line that's protecting him better because a lot of the time, like that we saw him, it was like quick hurry up offense. Like, all right, let's get like in kind of like almost like a chaotic offense, like not what you're going to see with Kyle. You mentioned no design runs. You start throwing in a couple design runs every drive and the defensive looks are, they're, they're going to have to be way different. And it was pretty clear that they want to see Trey Lance kind of, you know, face a little bit of adversity in this game. And they tossed him out there with the second, the second um, offensive line unit. And I don't think he was rattled, but he didn't have time. And it was, there was a lot more like on his play, like, all right, dude, go make these plays, you know, show us what you got kind of, um, which I love. I think that's a perfect way to do it because when he gets, say say he starts week one, they're going to run the ball probably eight to 12 times a game with him. I think I I would probably guess more, probably closer to eight, but you start throwing a couple runs like that in it. The defensive looks are not going to be the same. Also, the 49ers were trying to move the ball with him. They weren't trying to go out there and run the ball and run their normal offense. Like, that was pretty clear. Um, now, when we saw Jimmy come in, it looked like the offense that we saw last year where, you know, there's jet skirt, like jet plays and, like, stuff around the line of scrimmage, you know, quick passes to Debo. Um, but, I, I mean, when, when Lance was there, it wasn't really like that. So, I think that was one of the big things. I will say there was one play where Lance completely missed. I believe it was either – I think it was the nickel corner. He came in shallow and he popped up and he almost got an interception. That was probably the worst throw of the day from Lance. Um, he also missed a couple of throws across the middle. One of them was misplayed by Richie James, sort of. It was it was a little bit hard to tell, but I think overall, I mean, I, I was really I was really happy. Um, you brought up how you know he tries to extend the play, and when he's when he's like running around the line of scrimmage, like out of the pocket, he's looking downfield. That was one of my favorite things that he did at North Dakota because people would always go, "Oh, this guy's a running back. This guy's a running back," and I never understood it because. He does not try to just take off and run with the football. Like he is a he's a quarterback. He's very obviously a quarterback. He has the mindset of I'm going to stay behind the line of scrimmage. And let, let's think of some guys in the league that we've seen do that. I think the biggest guy you can bring up is Russell Wilson. I mean, Russell Wilson has made a career of extending plays for like 15 seconds behind the line of scrimmage. Where if you're like for us Niner fans, if you're watching Russell Wilson, it gets so aggravating when he makes your defensive line miss and miss and miss. And the first time he drops back and and you know has that play with to Ayuk, you see it. You see it on full display. A defensive lineman gets kind of around him. He sidesteps him, gets away, and then rolls out and he delivers a strike on third down that should have been completed and should have extended the drive. So, I think we saw like the the perfect uh, kind of the stuff that we would want to be like want to be proven almost in week one of preseason. Now it's only week one of preseason. We saw fourteen passes thrown. Like it's it's a very small sample size. But if you just look at the box score and you go five of 14, oh, this dude struggled outside of an 80 yard bomb to Trent Sherfield. Well, three drops, a couple screen passes that weren't included in that number. And he is literally running for his life. Like, that's not what the offense is going to look like. They run a very downhill offense where it's about running the football, running the play action. And when they were running a lot of those play action plays, it, it looked like bread and butter. It was perfect. It was exactly what you'd expect you, like the prototypical Kyle Shanahan offense to look like. So, I loved it. I'm really excited. I I cannot wait until next week. Um, also, I don't know if you if you know about this, Aiden, but they're having joint practices with the Chargers. So I think you're going to hear a lot about like, okay, where are they at with that? Because you're going to see him probably go against the Chargers ones and twos a good amount. Um, and that's just a, more looks. You know, more looks you see with Trey Lance, the, the better he's going to get. Um, he even said, kind of came out and said like he wasn't very pleased with his performance, um, which I mean, I I liked it. Like I said. Um, but it's good to see that, like that he, you know, he's not comfortable going out there and taking the four sacks. He said that he felt like he could, you know, shouldn't have took those. Um, other thing I'd like to say, if that's how he's going to play early on, where he's going to be, not be super aggressive in terms of like letting it rip when he's not comfortable, I'd rather him do that than go out there and start forcing passes left and right. Cause what we've seen, especially with, with the 49ers and with Cal's offense is that turnovers have absolutely killed them in the years that they've struggled last year. They what, had 31 turnovers. 
that's that's horrible. You know, like that's the difference in a lot of these losses. Um, and even last year when they struggled most of the season, you look at it and you go, they were in most of those games. And then it was third, fourth quarter where Nick Mullins just kind of started throwing it up. And you saw like, especially the Eagles game where it was like a pick six. You're like, oh my gosh, like this is terrible. But if Trey Lance is going to hang on to the football, if he's going to be safe and you have that explosive playability with him, because that is very clear that's the case. The offense looks different. They're able to go there and do a lot more when he's on the field. Um, I think that's all you can ask for a week one. So I was overall I was very impressed. But Aiden, anything else you kind of want to touch up on? A uh, quick shout out to Nick Mullins in his first preseason preseason game. He went one of four for for two picks. Um, love having this guy off of the roster. And yeah, I think you you hit it right on the head. Lance in Lance was super impressive, but he he was honest. He could be be better. Um, I think you you bring up a good point about the joint practices. The the Chargers have a good defense, um, and it'll be interesting to see him play. Excited to see the the by play between the Bosa brothers. Uh, maybe Nick can convince Joey to demand a trade or something like that. Uh, but yes, yeah, su- super excited and really want to see more of of Trey Lance, especially running the ball. Yeah, absolutely. So that's gonna do it for this segment. And we're going to be talking more about this preseason game and just 49er stuff as the week goes on. But thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.